Okay, thank you everyone for joining us for our HR Lunch Club today. We're looking at the four day working week and considerations for employers. Um, I'm Debbie Coyne and I'm a senior associate in the employment department and I'm joined today by Tori Hannan, who is the trainee solicitor who is also currently in the employment team. Um, as we go along, if anybody does have any questions, if you could please put them in the chat and then we will try and deal with those at the end of the session, but please feel free to put them in the chat as we go along. Otherwise, we can also catch up with anyone at the end of the session. Okay, so the four day working week. Um, since the pandemic, we have seen a large change in the way in the ways of working across the globe and also in the UK, with many employers adopting new ways of working for their businesses, looking at an increase in flexibility and hybrid working. And also, the, this is giving a lot of benefits to both businesses and the employees as well. So where else has the demand come from as well? There seems to be increased competition for talent in some sectors across the UK and the UK is experiencing a labour shortage in some sectors. This means that job seekers have more choice of where they can take up their employment. So in order to attract um, the best candidates, employers are looking at offering various benefits, including remote working and hybrid working. But many employees are actually saying that they would prefer a four day working week over financial benefits and other perks such as gym memberships. Um, so the four day working week will be desirable to candidates and assist those businesses in attracting talent, especially where there is a skills or labor shortage in their industry. We are also seeing um, employers promoting better mental health and well-being in the workplace. Employers are recognising that positive mental health and well-being is essential and that employees are also placing greater emphasis on work-life balance. Um, shorter weeks can lead to job and life satisfaction um, and reduce stress and burnout. So provided the balance is right and managing the workloads is put in place um, in a shorter week, then it can lead to an increased mental health and well-being. There's also a desire to increase workplace productivity. And it has been acknowledged by many businesses and those who've undertaken the recent trial that a five day working week model um, can actually end up with a lot of employees losing um, their focus over a five day working week. So many businesses who have trialed the four day working week have found that employees are actually more focused on the four day um, that they are working and they have found that actually productivity has actually maintained in the majority of cases. And in some cases, some businesses have found that productivity has actually increased. Um, I'll now pass you over to Tori, who will just give you a little summary on the pilot scheme. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. Um, so as Debbie said, there was a lot of demand to look into how a four day working week could be implemented. And there has been studies undertaken about this globally. We're going to look at the UK study today. Um, it's a pilot scheme which was introduced in June to December 2022. Um, this comprised of 70 companies of around 3,300 workers. And it's quite noteworthy that a lot of these were based in the digital marketing and tech, se tech sectors. Um, interestingly, during the trial, instead of compressing the hours of these employees, many of the employers actually opted to decrease, decrease the amount of working hours undertaken by the employees. Uh, on average, they reduced down to about 80% and um, about 32 hours per week, although they were still paid at 100%. So we'll move on to the findings of the uh, pilot scheme. So unfortunately, we are still awaiting the initial um, report. It's due out in late February. But initial comments from participants and research have overall been positive in nature. In particular, um, employers have found that productivity during the trial period was uh, a lot higher than when compared to previous years, which weren't in the pilot. Okay, thank you, Tori. I'll now um, move on to considerations for employers. We're going to look at both practical and legal considerations um, and we'll start with the practical side first of all. Um, 
obviously one of the first things that businesses need to look at is if they are looking at putting in place the four day working week, is that is that something they can do across the workforce or actually is it something that they can only do for part of their workforce? Um, and I would stress as well that every business is unique and will have specific requirements and business needs. And the way one business approaches a four day working week pattern might not actually suit another organization. That's not to say it can't be done differently, but obviously businesses will need to look at, at adopting different approaches that suit them. So the starting point that employees need to consider is, is a four day working week across the workforce or part of the workforce, workforce feasible? Is it realistic and is it practical for your business to introduce it? And it won't work in some sectors. There will be some sectors where it simply isn't practical. And the other thing to consider is that, is it realistic to expect employees to work five days into four? And if so, is that by reducing the hours that they work or condensing five days into four days? What we've seen from the pilots that Tori has mentioned is that those businesses actually chose to reduce the hours to 80% of the working week, but still keep the 100% of pay. And that was noted that productivity didn't decrease. But obviously, every business will be different. And therefore, there may be some businesses where reducing to 80% of the time won't be practical. So how should the working hours be reduced? Um, so as, as I've said, businesses will need to consider whether they wish to keep the same hours or whether they wish to reduce them or perhaps go to something in between. So it might be a 90% of the working week. But if employers do elect to keep the requirement for the same number of hours, then you are going to need to increase the working day on those four days where employees are working. Um, and that in itself can also have potential implications for working time regulations. However, as long as employers have systems in place to ensure that there's adequate rest breaks, um, then that shouldn't be too problematic. But another thing is to bear in mind that if you are increasing the hours over those four days, that actually longer days may detrimentally impact certain employees. So for example, those with childcare or other caring responsibilities, or those that may have disabilities and need shorter working days. So longer days, whilst an employer may ensure that rest breaks are put in place, it may, however, mean that there is less of a rest break at the end of each working day and may potentially have the impact of leading to more of a burnout. So it's just those that you need to considerations that need to be made. And what about um, monitoring productivity if you do introduce a four day working week? So obviously that's going to be key. Um, and what we've seen from the pilot scheme is that they have monitored productivity over the trial period so that they were able to compare it to the product productivity in the preceding years. Um, and many businesses, I'm sure, already have measures in place in how they monitor productivity. But if you are going to put it in place and you're looking at a trial period, it really is key to have measures in place so that you can monitor it and you can compare to previous years so you can see if, if it's successful or not. Okay, another consideration for employers is how to deliver an off day. Many businesses in the trial decided to completely close their business on the off day. However, there will be many employers who cannot do so due to the service needs of their clients. Employers therefore may consider staggering the employees off days to ensure that there are sufficient levels of cover. For instance, half the workers could be off on a Monday and half of them could be off on a Friday. If an employer is considering staggering the workforce off days, there is a few things that they would also need to bear in mind. So firstly, what is the minimum staffing levels? Can you actually serve the needs of customers with reduced staffing levels? There also may be an increase in work rate for those employees who are working on the days where there is a reduced level of staff. There also may be um, considerations about whether employees are able to change those off days and the systems you have to put in place to monitor staffing levels if they are able to change the off days. Um, and also, you'd also have to put in a system or policy in respect of people being able to take holidays uh, on off days. So one of the things I mentioned earlier was whether or not the four day working week could be rolled out to um, the entire workforce or whether or not you're looking at certain departments. Um, and this certainly will be 
many employers who can't offer it to the entire workforce. So therefore, obviously what those employees need to bear in mind is whether or not they may be potentially creating a division and potentially conflict in the workforce if they do implement the benefit for part of the workforce and not all of it, and how that could work across the organisation. They could also look at ways in which um, they could offer different benefits or different flexible working or patterns to those that they can't implement the four day working week for to try and ensure that they're treating all of their staff in the same way, albeit putting in place different, um, di different measures. Um, another thing employees would have to consider is um, what are the expectations of the employee when they're on an off day? Um, so here communication is really key with your employees. Some employers may require um, employees to be contactable on those days and as such you should always be taking advice on whether this would entitle them to claim overtime or time, um, time owing. Um, alternatively, if an employee is not able to be contacted on their off days, this should be clearly communicated to them and their team to ensure that they are not being disturbed. Um, and then also looking at alternatives to the four day working week, um, I'm sure you're all aware that there is currently a legal right to request flexible working um, by individuals, uh, which could include somebody obviously asking for the four day working week um, or an alternative pattern or more flexibility, hybrid working, home working. There's many different types of requests that can be made. But obviously, usually that is considered on an individual basis on a as and when requested. Um, and usually if there is a reduction in hours, then the salary will be reduced to reflect the new working pattern. And obviously, there's no guarantee that those requests um, will be accepted, but employers do need to consider the requests in line with current legislation. So if those employers who are thinking about looking at a four day working week, but actually are not sure it is going to work for the organisation, then there are other options that you can look at, some of which may already be in place, but home working, hybrid working, flexibility on hours work, and that can include um, when employees can travel to and from the office to try and avoid peak hours, because obviously that reduces the amount, you know, the amount of time that they've got, the amount of rest time they've got. Um, and some organisations are also looking at increased um, or unlimited holiday allowances. But obviously, if those are the sorts of things you're looking to introduce, then you do need to consider the impact on the business. And we would recommend taking advice in respect of that. So if we move on now to um, some of the legal considerations. Um, Consent and communication with the employees is absolutely key if you're going to be looking at implementing a four day working week. Um, a change in the working pattern will require employee consent. Um, whilst in the cases of a move to a four day working week at 80% of hours, but maintaining 100% of pay will be much easier to obtain consent. Other patterns, for example, if you are looking at still keeping the five day hours, say 40 hours a week for over four days, that is probably going to be much more difficult to obtain consent, certainly for some employees. Um, so what are the first things you need to look at? Um, obviously, contracts and policies. The employers will need to reflect the change in the contracts of their employees and ensure that all parties are clear of the expectations. So you can't unilaterally change the contract of employee and there you will need to consult with them in relation to the changes you wish to implement. Obviously, depending on how many employees are impacted and the size of the organisation will depend on whether you're looking at collective consultation or not. Um, if, however, there are more than 20 employees and you may be considering um, terminating their employment and offering re-engagement on the new terms with the new working pattern, if they don't agree, then you would need to consider collective consultation. Another thing that you might want to look at as well before going down that route is you could also send out um, questionnaires, um, ask for feedback for employees as if this was something we were introduced, what would people think about it, what would they like to see, how do they see that working, and there you, you might get a little bit of a heads up if actually that sort of pattern might create problems for some employees or whether they actually would be interested in that um, format as well. 
So if you do put it in place and you put a trial period, um, how easy is it to change back to the five days? Well, if it's been made very clear that you're going to have a trial period, you're going to monitor productivity, see how it works. And if at the end of that six months or however long the trial period is, you don't think it's working, then provided you've made that very clear from the outset, then you should be able to revert back to the normal five-day pattern without consultation. Um, but obviously, if there's no right to revert, revert back to the previous pattern, then you may need to look at a period of consultation and consent again. Just as well to bear in mind that obviously the longer it goes on, so if after the six months you think it is working, but then perhaps another year down the line, you actually decide that, no, actually, I'm not sure this is working in the way we thought it was. The longer it goes on for, the more likely it is that you will need to go through a period of individual consultant consultation and um, potentially um, collective consultation as well. Otherwise, you may be at risk of claims for constructive unfair dismissal. Another legal consideration for employers is that this change may affect holiday entitlement of employees. It would um, have an effect if the employee had begun to, be, um, to work reduced hours. Um, obviously, at that point, the holiday entitlement would have to be prorated to the uh, lower level of hours that they were working. This is one of the main disadvantages for employees of the full working week um, where they have reduced hours. So we need to be reminded just to fully consult with your employees to ensure that they are aware of this. Although, obviously, if you did obtain consent, this would be a big cost saving for businesses if they were agreeable to the change. Um, another consideration uh, for employers would be how to treat their part time workers. Uh, it's probably the case that many businesses do already employ people on a part time basis and they may, for instance, already work a four day working week. Businesses should be minded not to put these employees at a disadvantage as any less favourable treatment may result in discrimination claims, particularly if that employee falls within a protected group. So ways of ensuring that there would be no disadvantage obviously will differ based on businesses' um, abilities to, to deal with this, but it, it should be something like reducing the hours or increasing the pay uh, of the, those employees to reflect the same benefit that the full-time employees get. So looking at exclusivity um, considerations and conflict of interests, obviously if an employer does move to a four-day working week and employees find themselves that they've actually got an extra day, they may look at taking up another job, another part-time role elsewhere. They may also look at potentially um, trying to develop their own business during that time. So many contracts already have um, exclusivity clauses in place and clauses to deal with conflicts of interest. But obviously, if you are looking at this arrangement, then you need to really think about what you want those individuals to be able to do on their day off. Because if, if you don't mind them going and picking up a part-time job, which might be something completely, um, you know, completely different to their job, that's absolutely fine. Some people might decide to take up charity work, for example. But obviously, it could create a massive conflict of interest with the business. And also, if one of the reasons for implementing the four-day working week is for ensuring that employees have rest time um, and they're not working so many hours a week, then obviously that could be a, something that you want to sort of look at and make sure that you've got the contractual arrangements in place to deal with that. Um, I've already touched on this in relation to the working time regulations and rest breaks, but obviously do be mindful that if you are um, moving into a four day working week, that you do look at whether or not you're decreasing workloads or maintaining the workloads, but you're looking at basically having more productive days when people are working. Um, just be mindful of the rest breaks, mindful of the working time regulations and the hours, um, and also the employer's duty of care to employees. So do be aware of any risks of stress or burnout as well. And so yeah, fi finally, we'll just move on to some of the advantages and disadvantages of moving to the four day working week. 
Yes, yeah, so we've already discussed quite a few of the advantages at the beginning of the talk. Um, overall, uh, it has the potential to increase workplace equality as those who have other caring or childcare responsibilities might be better able to manage their time with an extra day off. Um, further, we've discussed that studies have indicated that employees are more productive when working a four day week, which of course obviously will benefit businesses in the long run. The job offering is unique uh, and will be attractive to talented, talented job seekers and could help you retain valued members of staff. Um, something Debbie touched on a little bit um, before is the predicted social impact. But there's also an environmental impact that this change could have if it was implemented on a large scale. Uh, researchers have suggested that with more free time, people would be inclined to take up uh, charitable endeavours. And further, it's believed that businesses' carbon footprints would likely be reduced if offices were closed uh, and people weren't required to undertake as many days of commuting. And then just summarising really some of the disadvantages, um, obviously the increased pressure if there's no reduction in workload, if you're still expecting people to do the five days work, but they're actually already completely flat out with no spare hours as it is at the moment, then obviously that potentially is going to create more stress and pressure. Um, potential tension between those um, who benefit from it and those actually who may not benefit from the new um, working pattern, particularly obviously if you're increasing the hours on the days that they're working. Um, the consultation requirements as well and all of the considerations that need to be taken into account um, and individual needs. So obviously it is important to get all of the contracts right, the policies right and all of those changes in place. Um, and also you do need to look at sort of ongoing monitoring um, and looking at any conflicts and productivity checks but I imagine that obviously as time goes on that will be less of a concern but certainly in the um, short term you will be wanting to look at those sort of measures. So hopefully we'll be able to give you a bit of an insight into sort of the four day working um, pattern and what uh, employers have done during the trial period and some practical considerations and some legal considerations to look at. As I've already said, it isn't one size fits all. There are certainly many other considerations that some businesses may have to look at. They may have a much longer list of considerations, particularly if they have to look at individual needs as well across the workforce, things that may come up as a starting to consult with individuals that they may not have been aware of at the outset. Um, but there's certainly a lot of benefits in going to the four day working week um and or looking at other considerations if that's not something that you can put in place um i'm just having a quick look now to see if there is any questions on the chat which it doesn't look to be but obviously if anyone does want to put in anything quickly now please do so otherwise please do contact us afterwards and we'll be happy to answer any emails or calls if you want to contact us if you've got any queries um also, if anybody's got any thoughts on what they would like to see for a future HR lunch club topic, again, please drop us a line, either put something in the chat or send us an email. We're very happy to work to what people want us to um, talk to you about. Um, and then finally, um, just a couple of events that we've got coming up. We've got a mock tribunal event um, coming up on the 16th of March. Um, so if anybody wants to um, join us for that, then please do. So there's the details on the slide, but you'll also find details on our website as well. And then we have our yearly employment or roadshow um, coming up as well. The slide does refer to the Chester Roadshow, which is on March the 21st. But we also do have the Shrewsbury Roadshow, which is on the 22nd of March. The Daresbury Roadshow is on the 18th of April and there will be a roadshow um, on the Wirral, but at the moment that date is to be confirmed. Um, but unless there's any questions, which it doesn't look like there is, um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today and please do get in touch if you've got any queries. Thank you.